Hello, this is your host Val with the Love and Victory Show with Val podcast. My crew have taken over the podcast. You see me now, but you won't see me do this podcast. They literally have taken over my podcast. It's takeover by the team. So you're going to see Christian. You're going to see Jacob. You're going to see Abigail. Oh, my God, you guys are in for a treat. They have taken over for the holidays. They're giving me a little break. Uh, it's been a full year running the podcast, running the radio. And so I can't wait. I'm waiting like you guys are. They haven't shared anything with me. Tune in. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val, the place to laugh, sip on a little wine, and have open and honest conversation. Here you will find the tools to resolve real life issues. Unwind, pour up a glass, and get ready to exhale. Well, hello, hello, team. How are we doing today? Doing hello. good. A Did fond, familiar, festive ho, 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 hello. Abby. Ho, 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 hello. I love that, Jacob. You're so funny. Oh, well. We had a really fun, um, uh, what was it called, Christmas party on Friday. That went wild. Yeah. Uh, actually, that uh, that Christmas party kind of uh, inspired a, a reaction, a scenario that I want to get into Ooh. later in the show. Okay, I'm excited. It, it, it inspired a ho ho no, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which we will get into. Oh, and can we talk about the food that Miss Carter brought oh, for the party? Oh yeah, oh yeah. That was, uh, we're gonna get into all of that. So uh, welcome into Christmas with welcome the crew. Welcome in Christmas with the crew. You may not recognize us. We're usually behind the camera. We are the crew for Miss Carter for the Love and Victory show with Val. And we're doing a little takeover today. Miss Carter's out of town, so we thought we would take over her show for the Christmas time, for the holiday season. So um, my name's Abigail. I am the radio and podcast coordinator for the Love and Victory show. And this and is... And I'm Christian. I am the one of the video production interns here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm Jacob. I'm also a podcast and radio intern. Yeah. And uh, this is our first... I actually did my first guest appearance on the radio show, uh, Mixing It Up. Oh, yeah? You feel like <laughs> a celebrity now? On interracial dating. So there might be some bleed over in terms of topics. Oh, yeah. From the two <laughs> conversations. Yeah, what about you? Do you? Did you like being on the radio show? You feel famous yet? No, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I also think all the viewers should... Uh, Go ahead and tune in to Mixing It Up, the radio show that we did last weekend. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was really fun. I really like on the radio show how we're able to talk about, like, you know, different topics. And we can really, Miss Carter always says, you know, let's go there. We're going to go there. So, um, you know, it's really nice to be able to talk about things, especially because that conversation, you know, we had some white people there, some black people there talking about racial issues. Everybody's covered. Everybody's covered. <laughs> no room for uh, for cancellation. No cancel culture right. this time. <laughs> and we're gonna go there today, but maybe down a different path. Yeah. To a lesser extent. A little maybe. more fun and lighthearted. You Absolutely. Know? For sure. Yeah. Um, Do you want to introduce our first sure. little segment so that we're doing? We have a bunch of fun holiday themed segments for you guys. And the first one I think we'd like to get into is just a Mount Rushmore of your favorite holiday dishes. It can be sides, entrees, desserts. You pick your top four mm -hmm. and uh, we'll kind of debate and see who has the best one. So how should we do this? Who wants to go mm, first? Interesting. Christian, you want to go first? Yeah, let's, la let's ladies do Christian first. first. Ladies, oh, okay. first. <laughs> ladies first? Okay. So I, hmm, for holiday food, so me and my mom kind of have like a weird holiday tradition. Um, we typically won't really cook for Christmas. What we do is, is we go get Chinese food. Um, oh, that's I think we amazing. do it on Christmas Eve. Yeah, we do it on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas morning, we wake up, we do, you know, the Christmassy stuff. And then we usually go see a movie later. But Chinese food is like my go-to holiday meal. I love Chinese okay, food. Okay, so if you're doing a Mount Rushmore, is it going to be four different things that you can find on a Chinese menu? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a picky girl. I'm a picky girl. So I, I usually stick to the orange chicken, the lo mein, maybe some hot sour soup or something. And then for my fourth one, I can do like a fried rice. So, so when you think Chinese food, you think Christmas? I think Christmas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very fast. That's awesome. Here, yeah. I'm, I'm going to throw a hypothetical at you, though. Okay, okay. So let's say you're going to get some Chinese food. It's Christmas, Christmas Eve. But 
your favorite place is closed and you're forced to get something else, then what would you get? I mean, what else is open? Yeah, you have to Christmas consider Eve. what's open on true, Christmas Eve true. and Christmas. True, well, true. Let's say you knew beforehand that they would be closed. Hmm, I'm not gonna lie. I keep it really simple. I would go through the Whataburger drive-thru because they're open 30 <laughs> Are they really open on Christmas, Christmas Eve? Eve? Yeah, they're open 24 hours. Oh, those four poor hours souls. Every day of the year, so I'd be, I'd be a Whataburger girl. I, like, I don't like anything too fancy. Well, I know Chick-fil-A is definitely closed. Yeah, Chick-fil-A yeah. for sure on is Christmas closed. Christmas Eve, Christmas, yes. Palm Sunday, some of the lesser Christian holidays. Not that, no, <laughs> I didn't mean that. Palm Sunday is very serious. I don't even know what that is. I, I I just know that's the day that when Jesus came into town, everybody had a bunch of palm leaves. Really? I, think. I, I don't know that story. That You're more right familiar. To, sounds with... right to me. I, I yield to the Christian <laughs> of the group. Christian should know. <laughs> don't yield it to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's funny. So, Christian, your family obviously celebrates Christmas. Of course, yes. And I believe you have a similar tradition with Abby, or at least you did. Yeah, so my, my parents are separated, so um, divorced. And when we were with my mom, we do stuff with my mom's side of the family. It's a lot more traditional. You know, you got your your ham, your um, your potatoes, your cornbread, you know, stuff like that. But then with my dad, it's kind of similar to you where mm-hmm. it's like, you know, he doesn't want to cook as much. So <laughs> we, we definitely get Chinese food. It's funny to me that we both have that kind of tradition where, you know, Chinese yeah. food's kind of like almost like a Christmas food for us. Like an American tradition. Yeah. You got to have Chinese food. <laughs> it's weird. All of our traditions are from somewhere else. Well, it's yeah. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> We're all a hodgepodge. Well, tell us yeah. about your, your yeah. Mount Rushmore. Well, before I do that, I want to know. So since you kind of have a version of... The traditional and the Chinese, which one is your favorite? See, you might call me crazy, but I, I think the Chinese, something about the Chinese food at Christmas time. It, I got to be it's, honest, it's I'm good. a little jealous. I'm a little jealous. Yeah, it's like breaking away from the norm. It's like, because we already Absolutely. had a Thanksgiving, so it's like, do you want to do the same thing? You don't have thing? to cook. Yeah. You know, cleanup's really easy. Yeah. There's, there's definitely a lot of overlap between, like, I guess what's considered, like, Thanksgiving food and then, like, what's considered Christmas food, you know? Yeah. So it's like you don't want to like double dip too much. I think that's why the Chinese is so good because it's like it's something else. Yeah, and like you can really go all out. It's not like you know when you normally get Chinese, it's like okay, I might get some rice, I might get a little something, something. But it's like no, this is our Christmas dinner. I'm pigging out and I'm like stuff in my face. <laughs> you know when you have like a a mother or a grandmother or in my case sometimes an uncle who cooks for Christmas, like sometimes someone can get offended. Like I I have an aunt who is vegan, Mm -hmm. vegetarian, I don't know the difference, but she doesn't eat meat and she always brings a vegan option to the Christmas dinner and it never gets touched. (laughs) Just by her. It's like a three bean (laughs) salad or some sort of vegetarian chili. Yeah. I I love her to death, but like, come on, you have a, a full meaty lasagna sitting right next to it it's not gonna win yeah and i used to be a vegan so i kind of i can relate to that and i remember i went to my ex-boyfriend's like house for christmas or thanksgiving or something and his mom she tried so hard that poor lady she made she took a raw cucumber and like scooped out the innards and then filled it up with quinoa and she goes here you go and i was like thanks (laughs) it sounds okay (laughs) wasn't very yummy the first time I ordered quinoa at a restaurant, I, of course, read it off the menu and pronounced it quinoa. <laughs> quinoa. Yeah. And, and the waiter was so smug. He was like, uh, I believe you mean quinoa. <laughs> it's like, dude, you work at BJ's Brewhouse. Are you really <laughs> talking down to me right now? It's one of those foods, you know. It's kind of fancy anyways. I never ordered it again. Just out of principle. Just because you were Because of that guy. <laughs> but I, I guess I'd have to go more traditional. I'm a big sides guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love green bean casserole. Ooh. And mm-hmm. I'll, you lost me. Yeah, I, lo- <laughs> I don't understand it. I feel like every other person in the country who's ever tried green bean casserole, like, they just had it poorly prepared. My mother, and it's nothing crazy. It's, it's all out of a can anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, it's out of a can, and it's the cream of mushroom soup from Campbell's and the French's French fried onions on top. It's pretty simple, but I, it's so damn good. It's so delicious. It's so damn good. I, I'm going to have to try it if, if your family makes it. Maybe, maybe I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to bring it one day. Yeah, I you guess. should. My, but my, that's a lot of pressure, too. I had a roommate that made it for you. She made it for dinner like once a week. She loved that stuff. I, I had good. it one time outside of the holidays, and I put it on top of a bratwurst. 
Ooh, that sounds yummy. <laughs> it doesn't. You should be a chef, it Jacob. Was <laughs> I think that we can all agree, though, cookies are like a constant for everybody during Christmas time. Yeah, sweets in general. Sweets in general. You know, I like, um, I'm more of like a cake, cupcake kind of girl. Ooh, or if it is going to be the cookies, it has to be those like sugar cookies with that nasty frosting on top. Exactly. It it's has so to. so good. Uh, from the plastic container at the grocery store? The ones that like are make your mouth so dry. That no matter what time of year, it's always the same flavor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, it tastes exactly the same. They never switch it up. They change oh, the sprinkles up, change the color. Cookies are a good one. Yeah. I love cookies. I mean, it's tasted the exact same since I was in, like, second grade or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't hey, hate those. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I mean, I feel like those. The, that's such a, like, a depressing cookie because I feel like those are for when, like, you have a hole in your heart and you just need something soft to kind of fill in. The, yeah, <laughs> I can see that. The crevices. They, they do make you feel a little nasty after you kind they of really hate yourself do. afterwards. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, my family does something called a monster cookie. Ooh. Well, you're going to have to explain that. Yeah, what's a monster cookie? <laughs> so I guess the monster part is just size and how big it is. Mm -hmm. But it is an oatmeal peanut butter cookie with chocolate chips and M&Ms in it. Ooh, yeah. That sounds uh, you had me at that oatmeal. sounds really good. Oatmeal cookies get a lot of hate, and they are so good. They're so moist. They're so They're very, sweet and you delicious. can have them for breakfast. No, but see the problem, with the, the problem with yes. the oatmeal cookies is that there, that you, there is none. They're, I agree. They disguise themselves as chocolate chip when they have raisins in it. But I love raisins. They're so yummy. Those but, are but, good. But not as much as chocolate chips. You, so you feel like it's like a scam. No one has yeah, ever. No, I, I'm saying it's fraudulent. No, <laughs> no one has ever picked up an oatmeal raisin and thought, oh, chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, that's only happened. Yeah, because they're textured. Don't play dumb. It's now. very different. You can from, tell. Let's be honest. From far away. You you do a double take. Yeah, I guess, but I'm not disappointed. I like I like the chocolate chip. See, cookie. that's where we differ. Or the oatmeal cookie. I remember my stepdad's mom used to make these cookies. They were so weird, but they were so good. She would like, you know, you make a rice crispy, like you boil or you cook like the marshmallows and you mix them with the rice krispies. Sure. She did that, but with cornflakes. And then she would dye the marshmallow juice or whatever, like green. And then, so it'd be like a little Christmas treat. And then we'd put like the hot tamales, like those spicy little candies on them. Oh my God. Ooh, that, that, that does sound pretty good. It's the weirdest thing, but it was always so good. And I always looked forward to it. My mouth would be so green after. <laughs> it was, it's a weird combo, but it's, it's really good. Yeah, because it's sort of like a gummy gelatin candy. Mm-hmm. I, I would have to try it. And they're served cold, no baking required. That's true. They're pretty good. They're okay. Pretty good. Trust I'll me. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make them. We'll have another uh, Christmas party part two. So I know you did a four. To round out my four, I guess I would do green bean casserole, monster cookies, ham, and then mashed potatoes and gravy, I guess. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big side. Guy. That's a solid four, I think. Yeah. And then what's your final yeah, four? De de my final four probably, de no, definitely. Uh huh. We got ham, cornbread, potatoes, and then cookies. Okay. okay. Okay, what kind of potatoes, though? Mashed. Mashed. Okay. That sounds skin good. Skin or no skin? Gravy, no gravy. Come on. Oh, man. Give and what me. kind of gravy? What's, White or brown. My bad. I, I mean, you got to have gravy on it, though. It's, yeah. If it's like, especially like for Christmas. Like, yeah. You, you got to go all out. Yeah. Extra gravy. Extra mash. Yeah. <laughs> my final four are would be lo mein. Orange chicken, crab rangoons. Oh, I love crab rangoons. <laughs> if that was the only Christmas Chinese Christmas. element I could introduce to Christmas, that's that's what oh, I would. They're so take. delicious. So, what is that a side or is that a dessert? Like, what's happening? With I the believe crab it's rangoon? like a side slash appetizer type of thing. Right. And it's a weird, like cream cheese and crab. It's very. It's like it's like pastry puff filled with cheese and I guess some form of crab and meat it has meat in it so it's not a dessert but like I, I i never bite into it i'm like ooh, this crab that's like yeah oh. you want it for the cream cheese it's like crab flavored cheese <laughs> Crab flavored cheese. that's what's happening <laughs> it's really good yeah do you, you dip, dip it in, in sour yes. cream no sour cream not sour cream sweet, sweet and, sour and sour sauce i, I was confused <laughs> sour I'm cream sorry. that's a lot of dairy Ooh. <laughs> it sounds like of, constipation i, I mean Christmas. none of these foods are good for you yeah, that's true. That's true. You don't eat healthy on the holidays. You get a little husky on the holidays, actually. Yeah, yeah you, you got to splurge on the holidays. Yeah, I've already started my holiday. What, uh, what do they say? Hibernation, weight gain? I've already started mine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, do you want to move on to the next one? Okay, yeah. So what does that say? What's uh, I think we're moving into our second segment. We're moving into oh, okay. so, our next segment. So we can either do the Christmas movie draft or Ho Ho No. I'll let Abby decide how she wants to feel. I, feel, I am really excited about Ho Ho No. And that might be how we want we to end, end the show. Out. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll end with Ho Ho now. Okay. So let's talk about Christmas movies. Yes. And Christmas and this movies. one's going to be a little different because I think both of us picked him for the Mount Rushmore. It's like, okay, that's fine. But once a movie is off the board, it's off the then board. Then you can't take you it. You can't, can't see be that picked. movie again. And you, there are a lot of choices. And uh, Christian and I were doing some research before this. Um, there are some that you wouldn't think are Christmas movies. Like, evidently, Gremlins is a Christmas movie. Huh. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I don't think I've ever even seen Gremlins. It's, oh, you got to see Gremlins. Man. I kind of consider... It's, it's a classic. Is it Groundhog Day? Does, doesn't it snow in Groundhog Day, too? Is yeah, that but a snow doesn't... Yeah, but yeah, if, if it snows in the movie, I don't think that that necessarily constitutes a Christmas movie. But we're from Texas, so when I see a movie with snow, I'm like, so it's Oh, Christmas. it's Christmas. It must be Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it must be Christmas time. <laughs> okay, so... Who do we want to go first? I went first last draft? time. Jacob, you go first. I go first this time? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I am not going to pick my favorite Christmas movie, but I am going to pick a movie that I feel might be popular, and mm -hmm. I want to go ahead and grab it off the board. I am going to pick the original, I believe it's 1995, Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Have both of you seen that movie? No, that, that, that's a good it. one. A what? Well, yeah, because I, I told Jacob this the other day. Um, I'm first of all not a huge movie buff, but my stepdad finds Tim Allen to be annoying, so we were never like we didn't watch it. That was wow. just we didn't I watch mean, it. I okay, mean, and he gave no reasoning behind that. He, he just doesn't just, like him as an just, actor. I he's guess. Just annoying. Honestly, my view on Christmas movies might be skewed because my. My, my parents are haters because my mom hates that one movie, um, Christmas Story, that everybody loves. That one's on too much. That one's on like TBS 24 hours No, but hours that's, that's the day. whole point. It's supposed do to you be really on the whole Do day. you really have you, that you, on the, no, the entire day? You don't sit there and watch it. You know what I mean? That's just the movie that you have, you have on, on in, in the, the background. background while you're opening presents, while you're having your, your mm -hmm. family discussions. You know, it, it, it's, it's background dressing. I've... It deserves at least 20 to 30 minutes in the background, but I'll tell you that I'm so thankful for like bowl season uh, during the holidays, and I'm thankful for the NBA on Christmas Day, <laughs> so I don't have to have that on all day long. Yeah. They do sports on Christmas? I mean, you don't need it on the they whole do. day. I don't know that. Clearly, I don't watch sports. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the last time LeBron James spent Christmas Day with his kids. What a shame. So sad. That is sad. That is sad. Poor guy. Um, okay. Yeah, so I've taken the Santa Claus. Uh, it It's a classic. It has uh, garnered like uh, four or five sequels that have probably gotten progressively less good <laughs> each time around. I haven't seen the other sequels, but we can kind of just group that whole series together. Y you got the Santa Claus. But basically the premise is... Uh, Santa, the real Santa is, well, he becomes the real Santa, but Santa's on his roof Christmas Eve, falls off, dies. Tim Allen is out in the snow in his underwear. Wait a second, I may have seen this. Puts on the suit. Yeah, doesn't get his like hand stuck in a window or something too? Or am I, I Probably. feel like I'm remembering that. I don't, I don't remember that specific part. Now that's now it's ringing a bell. I have seen that. That's a goofy movie. I it's like a, that. I yeah, like yeah, yeah. I like the goofier movies. It's goofy, but it's like one of those like wholesome. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like most Christmas movies are pretty wholesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a kid, like uh, it's so sad, but I believed in Santa for a long time, and those movies only confirmed his existence. Oh I'm like, yeah. This is what the North Pole looks like. <laughs> this is I've how the sleigh it. flies. There is technology. <laughs> Behind this. <laughs> and it's possible. He can do it. <laughs> this is empirical evidence of Santa Claus. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it made things a little tough for me growing yeah. up, having those movies. But I loved them. So that's, that's, uh, that's round one. Pick one. Um, who's going to go next? I'll go next. Okay. And this one, you know, might be, I don't know, this might be a little childish, but I love and like when I think of Christmas, I, I watch this every year. Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. 
Have that you seen that? that? I, I, wait, that's the 3D one, right? It's like 3D animated? I don't think it's in 3D, but it like there's like three different stories and like first they start off and it's like Donald Duck and his like three nephews and like they're ungrateful and it's like that that's the storyline, right? Like they're ungrateful <laughs> for their presence or no, they 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 wish for it to be Christmas day after day after day after day, and then they get tired of all that's. Then they become like, well, I don't care about Christmas anymore because it's every day. Oh, they, and get, then, they get spoiled. Yeah, they get spoiled, and then it switches to, and then the next story is like Mickey and Minnie, and it's so cute. I'm um, spoiler alert. They um, get a gift for each other. Right. So like, I think yeah, Minnie had um, a pocket watch, and so he got her a chain for her pocket watch. But she sold. Oh, but the she pocket sold. Watch. The but watch. she sold the pocket watch to get him a box for his harmonica, and he sold his harmonica, harmonica to, to, get, to him, get the. The, the chain, chain for the pocket watch. Gifts of the it, Magi. It's the classic right? Christmas mix-up. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the thought that counts. And I think there's another story with Goofy, but I can't remember. That one's not sticking out right now. I think the original gift of the Magi is like a guy buys his wife a nice hairbrush because she has such beautiful hair, but she like shaved her head and sold her hair. <laughs> that's for, like For like his <laughs> gift? For his gift? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think like I saw an episode of Sesame Street where like Bert and Ernie, like they do like the same thing where it's mm-hmm. like, like, yeah, like Bert like gets something for Ernie, like for his, like, his rubber ducky and then like Ernie gets of rid course. of his rubber ducky wow. to get like a Aww. book or something for The Bert. most important yeah. thing in his life. Yeah. The rubber ducky. That was it's, a strong relationship. It shows how much they care about each other. A very strong <laughs> same-sex relationship. Yeah, I have seen that, that they're saying they're gay. I, I think that is official. I'm, I support it. I mean, it was spec- they, they, they could be queer. Speculation. They, they definitely could be queer. I, I, they did yeah. share a bed, correct? No, no, no. They, they, but they shared a room, but the beds were pretty close. It's like, yeah. Ernie, quit eating cookies in the bed. Sorry, <laughs> And I mean, Elmo can't be straight either. Why? Well, Elmo is a, is a kid. I don't think that, Oh, yeah, that's you know. true. Quit, quit sexualizing Elmo. My bad. I, mean. <laughs> I said he was straight. I mean, he should be wearing pants now yeah. that we're on the subject. The other ones wear pants and clothes. Yeah, his Elmo's parents Paper wear clothes. clothes. Elmo is just naked. Because <laughs> like, yeah, he's a baby. Babies walk around in diapers. Yeah, maybe he's like a toddler. Yeah, it's just a cute little thing. Isn't it weird that like in SpongeBob, when you finally meet his parents, they look nothing like him? They're I think like they a, are sponges. They're like a, but they're like a different. They're like they're different circular, shape. They're circular sponges. Maybe like the square likeness is like a recessive gene Could in, be. The, in the sponge family. If we're talking about that, how did a crab have have a have a whale as a daughter? I that is such a good Adoption. question. We need to meet Pearl's mother. We do. Yeah. Who is she? Which what's she doing? Where's she's she out at? there. Well, we know she's out of the picture because we know that Mr. Krabs was trying to get with Mrs. Puff. Ooh. Oh yeah. Mm, so we know that Mr. Mr. Krabs is single. Ooh. And whatever happened to the other half of his mustache? It, or is that an That's antenna? his nose. Isn't That's it? his nose? Yeah. I thought it was just a mustache. No, no it's just his nose. <laughs> no, it's not his nose. Yes, it is. He probably, no. Because there's one episode where he like retracts and all of his limbs go away and it, even his nose. I remember vividly. <laughs> I remember vividly. I have SpongeBob etched in my skull. F- folks, sound off in the comments. Is that a nose? Is that a mustache? <laughs> is that what is on antenna? Mr. Krabs' face? Anyways, ra- raining it back into <laughs> okay, so, the, the Christmas film draft. So just so you know, the original Santa Claus and Once Upon a Mickey. Mickey's Once Upon a... I think it's Once Upon a Christmas is okay. what it's called. Yeah. So I think it's a major upset that this movie's fallen to me. As Still the, first as, round. As the third pick. I feel like I know um, what you're going to say. And National I was say Lampoon's... Christmas Vacation. It's a good one. That's all, a strong time, pick. I've never seen it. All t- you haven't seen Not it? Not once in my life. In, in my opinion, that's like the quintessential like Christmas movie. You know what I mean? You got comedy. You got a little bit of drama. Like, but like, it's all about giving. You know what I mean? I, I think that that's what makes it such a good Christmas movie. That's my pick right there. Uh, that is a good movie. That's another one that's on TV every year. That's not something I watch habitually every year. Uh, so I wasn't going to touch it, but I'm proud of you for making that pick. You can just say that you're because not subscribed it, you, to the Jelly of the Month Club. Because <laughs> I, I'm not, but that is a good pull. Okay, uh, now back to you, And Jacob. I believe uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus plays a neighbor in that movie, the woman who plays Elaine on Seinfeld. I it's correct. don't remember, but you're that's probably right. right. That's right. Okay. Uh, so I guess it's, uh, do you want to do like a snake draft where you pick again and we go down this way? Or yeah. Or? I mean, if you want me to just take all the good stuff first, <laughs> well, I mean. you're in a good spot. Hmm. Okay. Well, in that case, I think for my second pick, I'm going to go with Elf. 
Mm, that's a good more, one. More, more of a modern Christmas classic, you know, I, if you funny. can call it a classic. Funny. I think that, that Will Ferrell's great as the elf. I know some people think he's annoying, but I think that him contrasted with, like, the rest of the characters who are just, like, miserable. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, think, I think it adds so much to the movie. And I think it's funny, too, that, like, we see, like, a grown man act like a child. Yeah. And, like, because I feel like a lot of times, too, like, as we grow up, we, like, lose that, like, magic of Christmas. Like, I've even seen it online. People are like, oh, what I would give to, like, wake up on Christmas morning at 10 years old. Like, yeah. And right. feel that joy and the again. the magic and, like, is still there. Yeah. And so I like that Elf kind of... Um, you know, takes us back, like see, like to see a grown man like, so excited about Christmas and stuff like that. I think that's cool. I like Elf. It yeah. is interesting to see that that's kind of become his most iconic character. Yeah. Because I was a huge Will Ferrell fan for Anchorman and Step Brothers, and then like he made this Christmas movie. It's like, come on, like, yeah. where is all the wildly inappropriate? Humor? And, and it's, like, it's I pretty he was tame letting too. Me down. Yeah, like for for, it for is a Will very Ferrell tame. movie. But uh, there's just something about. You know, making a Christmas a good Christmas movie that like that just sticks in people's minds forever. Well, and if you think about it too, like Christmas, I was thinking about this the other day because I was thinking about Mariah Carey's, you know, All exactly. I Want for Christmas is You. <laughs> if you can produce something Christmas that is everlasting, you never have to make anything again in your right. life, literally. Because I feel like people poo-poo the Christmas movies and the Christmas albums, but. As like an artist, as an actor or a singer, that's financially, like, that's like, that's the like one of the do. best things you could do to really submit your legacy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Totally. I, I mean, I don't, I don't ever think about Bing Crosby or Dean Martin until it's Christmas. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, so. Yeah. That's a good conversation, but I think uh, we'll do three movies. Yeah, yeah. Three Let's movies. do three. Um, okay, so for my second movie choice, I did Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. I was gonna do Elf. <laughs> um, there's this other movie. Um, I told you I'm not a big movie person, but I do. I'm a good. I like Home Alone. That's a very uh, yeah. good pick. Home, H- Home a Alone one. is a classic. There's three of them, right? Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen the sequels. I, know that, uh, so I, I like know the New York one. Lost in New York is Home Alone 2. That's my favorite. So you like the weird pigeon lady? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love New York too. That's such a good... Both of those movies, a secondary theme is like not judging a book by its cover because I think the first movie is like the weird old man who is like rumored to like butcher mm-hmm. someone. Oh, right, right, And he's right, just yeah. a friendly old guy who's just shoveling sidewalks and stuff. Yeah. And then the crazy bird lady who lives in the park... And, like, no one would ever talk to her because <laughs> gross. She, she's covered in pigeon feces. Oh, yeah. I think, it, go, I, I think it goes back, too, though, to, like, that whole theme with Christmas where it's, like, you know, like, some people, like, don't have anybody during the holidays. Right. It's, like, you want to, like, invite them into your circle and exactly. feel welcome and loved. Yeah. Because yeah. he was, like, a spoiled brat. You know, he's, like, the youngest of however many kids. And they clearly got money. And, and he's getting oh, yeah. lost. Oh, that – Lost in New York is great because he's staying in that hotel – And as a kid watching that movie, you see him get room service, and it's just cart upon cart. And you see the bill adding up. Cakes and pies. (laughs) It's just a dream come true. I don't know. It made me anxious almost watching that part because I was like, oh, my God. His dad's going to kill him. Oh, no. (laughs) I was in And he would get, like, a limousine to take him around New York City. It's like, uh, take me to FAO Schwartz to the toy store. Oh, God. See, I'm, I'm anxious already because of it. Oh I don't know God. why I like that movie. I, that's I wild. I don't know what's going on in our the way we were brought up, but to me, that's the perfect day mm-hmm. as a kid. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Just a pig out. Uh, yeah, I'm still doing it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll go ahead and submit my last two. Uh, I'm going to do, speaking of Bing Crosby, I'm going to do White Christmas, which is an older film might be 50s or 60s. You can find it on Netflix. But uh, it's a musical um, mm-hmm. set in, like, rural Vermont. They were both in, like, World War II. And their army colonel is, like, forced to retire, uh, bought a ski lodge, and it's not doing well because it's not snowing. So Bing Crosby and his buddy are, like, famous, like, musicians and performers. It's like, okay, well, let's bring our popular Broadway show and bring it to his little hotel in Vermont 
And you know, what's what, what's this called? It's called White Christmas. I should see that. That sounds yeah, like a no. good movie. That's I, like my cup of tea. I love it. And there's like so much. It, it's a musical, right? Yeah. And, it, and the choreography and the set design is like insane. Mm-hmm. And it's not all Christmas songs, you know. Like, I I, I love it a lot. So. Yeah. Not are, too are they like? Is it, are the songs original for the film? Yes. Okay. That, that oh, cool. that's cool. And then, of course, I think Bing Crosby sings White Christmas, Duh. which is the most famous version the of that song, right? Yeah. So uh, that's going to be that. And then my favorite Christmas movie of all time is Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've never seen that either. Uh, <laughs> Y'all are putting me on to some good Christmas movies. Speaking of good. spoiled kids, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's kid won't talk to him, essentially, unless he gets this toy. Or it leads you to believe that. But Arnold's a horrible father. Like, he waited until Christmas Eve to go shopping for his son. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when he goes to find the hottest toy in years, it's sold out. Obviously. So he's, like, driving all over the city Christmas Eve instead of being with his family. Yeah. Trying to find this toy. And hijinks ensues. Uh, But uh, that's that's my favorite all time. (laughs) I think it got a 19% on Rotten Tomatoes. Is that bad? That's bad? That's bad. I think you want 100. Oh, no, yeah, okay. 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. is good. Okay. So th- that's by far one of the worst scores. <laughs> but I bet you if you check that audience score, I bet you it's much higher. I bet. It's, it's, and Sinbad plays like a mailman who's also a terrible father looking for the same <laughs> toy. And they keep bumping into each other at different stores and trying to figure out ways to slow the other guy down. And that's like, I feel like that's a good message too because I think a lot of people get caught up on the gift, like finding the perfect gift. You know, and when I, when I personally, when I shop for people, I don't like to know what they want. Like, I want to be like, okay, I've known you for this long. What can I find for you? And that's so hard. It is hard, but I love it. I love it. Like trying to shop for, shop for my mother's impossible because I feel like, I guess I just don't know a lot about, <laughs> about her. her. About her. Shame on you. But like, no, she's like really into <laughs> online shopping. So like, if she, she ever needed everything. something, she gets it. Yeah. yeah. So like. I don't know what to get you. It's hard to shop for somebody like, like that. Like, I think growing up, we got her the same ring for Valentine's Day, like maybe two or three years in a row. Really? And we're like, well, she likes hearts, so let's, let's oh, get that. Oh, yeah. And we just kept doing it. But hearts. what's good about that is I feel like, you know, no matter what you got her, she loved it, you know, because y'all are her kids and she... I, she's so hard to read. Like, I feel like she's just saying thank you because that's what you're supposed to say. Mm-hmm. And she probably knows. <laughs> I feel like some people know they're difficult to shop for, too. My problem is, is I tell people what I want, and then I tell the, like, for instance, I'll tell, like, my mom and, like, the person that I'm dating and then, like, my stepdad or whatever, and then they'll all three give me the same thing. And then I have to figure out. That's happened before. Or they try. Th- thankfully, I've, they I've heard about some of the gifts you've asked for, and I don't think we'll bring it up on this podcast. <laughs> what but did I ask for? I'm not. I'm not. I'm <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. I know what you're talking I'm about. I'm literally not bringing it up. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> we, we need a disclaimer on this episode. Yeah. I'll, I'll just say... I know what you're talking about. I get okay. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't, I won't, I won't Message received. Okay. <laughs> Better to give than to receive or vice versa. Um, um, my Christmas, my next Christmas movie. It's the last one right here. Controversial. It's probably not a Christmas movie, but it is to me. And I don't know if y'all have heard of it. I'm actually going to do a little two-in-one. I like Frozen. We're going to get that out of the way. Frozen's a Christmas movie. I do not care. I guess. It snows. There, there is a snowman. There's ice yeah. and there's a snowman. I Christmas. guess there's, there's a reindeer. reindeer. Yeah. Okay. There is a reindeer. I'll allow it. So that's Christmas. But this kind of goes back to like my family's weird traditions, right? So we eat Chinese food and we watch Rent, the musical. I don't know if y'all are familiar with the, that. The one about HIV. Oh, yeah, yeah. The one about uh, <laughs> HIV. Um, the one about, um, about like, homosexuality. So poverty. And death. <laughs> Illness it warms my heart, but it takes over the course of two years, and uh, and then it kind of speeds through the second year. Anyway, the bulk of the movie takes place in the wintertime, Christmas, New Year's. So to me, it is a Christmas movie, and that's what we watch every year on Christmas, me and my mom. So that's my third Christmas movie choice. I mean, Rent is a great movie. It is, but is it a Christmas it. movie? I think that's up for debate. But I've never seen Rent. Uh, I was in choir in junior high, and I sang some songs from Rent. But uh, that's, the one. that's the one. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one. Everybody, everyone knows that one. You know, because you can look at it too, like an end of the year song. Because you know, if there's five hundred, twenty five thousand, yes. six hundred minutes yeah. in a it's year. It's a New that's Year's true. movie. It's a new, yeah. We can <laughs> com- we can compromise. It's a winter movie. A Maybe. wintertime film. I mean, I think if Frozen's a Christmas movie, then you got to include Rent as a Christmas. But movie. But specifically, I don't watch the movie version. I watch when they recorded the last Broadway production of it and they 
put it on DVD. Specifically, I had to put that out there. That's the one I watched. So is, you think it's better than the yes. movie version? One thousand. I'll have to check it out. I, I haven't. I, I'm I've a only theater buff, the so movie. like I like to see. It was originally on a stage, so I like to see it on a stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like how it was originally intended. How it was intended. Mm-hmm. Man. Controversial it may be. All right, well, to tie a bow on the Christmas movie draft. Oh, uh, wait, wait, I have one more film. Didn't you do three? I've only done two. Oh, oh no, okay. you did. He, he did do two in a row, but he hasn't done yeah. his third. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have to do your last one. Y'all are going to you know, let me even the playing field here. <laughs> uh, it's, so it's hard for me to choose the last one, but I think that i got to go with a classic, and i got to do uh, Rudolph, the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a really the, good one. You know, the, the OG stop motion. You with, uh, say, like, with yeah, like Yeah, Yukon Cornelius. You uh, know? Yeah. The Heat Miser? Is that the no, same No, no, no. That's, that's in uh, Year Without a Santa Claus. That I one's think. better. See, it's so hard to choose because they're all so good. Mm-hmm. But like... I, I'm Mr. Heat Miser. <laughs> I'm Mr. Sun. Are you Team <laughs> Heat Miser or are you Team Snow Miser? Heat Miser. I, because as a, a husky child, I more closely identify with, <laughs> with the fatter character. I like <laughs> the snow because it's getting frozen. It's giving Elsa. See, yeah, I, I think I gotta go snow miser. But, you, but you who just... wants to snuggle up with a frozen skinny guy, huh? Not me. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> <laughs> Not me at all. But yeah, I feel like you know we we have a huge variety of movies we've talked about, but uh, you gotta go back to one of the, the all time classics. Rudolph and, and, and the Red Nosed Reindeer. Pick Rudolph. Yeah, yeah. That's it just, a it's such a feel good movie too. You know, like yeah, you, like the vibe is just it's unbeaten. There's a whole song for him. I'm gonna say that the popular vote is gonna go to Christian because I felt like he picked. Like if you looked up Christmas basic. movie rankings, <laughs> my, my my picks were basic. Yeah, but. and then Abby technically picked four, so she's disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> so okay uh, so I'm satisfied with second place here. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll, I'll take the win. Congratulations, Christian. Good job. <laughs> okay, and then our final segment for this episode is called Ho Ho No. Ho Ho No. Oh no. That's oh right. no. So basically. I, I've come up with a couple of scenarios that you might find yourself in this holiday season. And the original idea was, would you say ho or yes or oh no to mm-hmm. being in this situation? A lot of these are pretty uncomfortable. So like we might say no to all of them, but like what would you do is also encouraged. I yeah. would like to hear that. It'll, okay. it'll, it'll spark up some, some fun conversation here. So our first scenario that you'll say ho or no to is it's a Christmas office party, um, which uh, we were just in. Mm-hmm. We just had we here. Just experienced we that. just experienced. I actually, I think I have two office party scenarios. Okay. The first one is someone gets the great idea to hang up a mistletoe at the <laughs> office party, and you're drinking and you're talking with a coworker, and you get along with this coworker. Um, you may even do some harmless flirting, you know, during a normal work day, but all of a sudden you find yourself under the mistletoe and you kind of get the vibe from them that they're expecting something. Mm-hmm. Do you go in for the kiss or do you abstain? So in a relationship, Abigail would, would refrain. Single You're Abigail, single in this situation. Single <laughs> Abigail, you know... It's hard for me to say no sometimes. You know what I mean. So I, I would, I would give a smooch. Wow. I would give a smooch. So I, I'm gonna go with ho. She, Literally. Wow. Yes. Well. <laughs> Literally on that one. <laughs> see, I'm gonna go with no. You like to keep ah. it professional. And, but I, see, I don't think it's a necessarily a thing about professional. More so a thing about PDA. You know what I mean? Like I would feel uh. weird about kissing somebody in front of like all my coworkers, you know. Right. Like that's, that's interesting. I don't think it's necessarily inappropriate, but more so just like, oh, like everyone's watching. You just feel awkward. Like, yeah. You would feel a little sloppy. It's not not very private. Right. Yeah. But but you're okay with doing a relationship with a coworker maybe outside of the office. Well, as you know, as long as there's no issue with the power dynamic, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I don't think it's it's good to do like, you know, be flirting with your boss and or anything you're like that. Or yeah. yeah. But if y'all are on the same like level playing field, I think it, it's a green light for me. Uh, yeah, I would all, I would have to say no, but for the professional aspect, because mm-hmm. if things didn't work out, like even if it was just a kiss and nothing more, 
I feel like trying to come into work the next day, it would be just a little awkward. Yeah. And yeah, then maybe yeah. if, it may lead to more expectation <laughs> too to like continue something when it might not be when it may have just been like oh it's just a Christmas right. mistletoe cake. I, I like you would inevitably have to have the conversation of like okay, you know what that happened, <laughs> but yeah, you know let's try to move on. Yeah. And then also like if you did it in front of your coworkers and your boss, like every time you happen to be next to the other person and be like, oh, I'll knock it off you two. Yeah. Yeah, true, true. Then all of a sudden, everyone's expecting you guys to it, get together. It would be so bad. So it's the consequences that were more Yeah, I, I Not mean, the kiss itself. Like, it's, if for whatever reason, you know, someone left that company, you know, and then you were no longer co-workers, I might reach out and see how you were doing. Mm -hmm. But I would try my very hardest not to do it while we were, you know, in the same close quarters yeah. every day. And like working together. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, that's fair. So uh, another fork off of that one, it's the um, it's the holiday Christmas party, and one of your coworkers has written you a poem. Mm. Mm. And I feel the, like you and, can and, speak and, to and that. It's a, <laughs> and it's a custom poem. <laughs> a familiar poem where the words have been changed to include things about you. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how we roasted you, you a little bit. How would you guys feel about that? See, you go first. I think I think I well first it would depend on the content of the poem, right? Like, yeah. If they're you know. there, there were some jabs, you know, like <laughs> making fun of your age in comparison to everyone else, but uh, <laughs> but most of it was good. I think I think overall I'd be flattered. Yes. You know, because just the fact that somebody that they obviously care about you enough to write the poem and. Um, they put a lot of thought into it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Because like, you can't just like half-ass a poem, really. Mm -hmm. Like you, uh, you know, you got to put some kind of thought into it. I think that overall, I'd be flattered. I'm gonna go with Ho for this one. Okay. I, I think that that it, it could be wholesome. I, I could see how it could go wrong, but I think overall, I, I think Ho. I'm gonna go Ho. Yeah, I think it'd be nice. I think I would appreciate that. No, neither of you would feel awkward in that. I moment. mean, it would it, like like you said, it would depend on the content yeah, of the poem. If the, someone's like professing their love for me and it's like awkward and weird, that's a little much. It might be weird, but yes. I feel like I personally don't like a lot of like junk. Like I don't like people to buy me something because they feel like they have to buy me something. You know what I mean? So I would love to receive like a poem because it's like that shows that that person thought about you and took the time. But then I don't have to like. Put something somewhere. Oh, yeah. but I, also, I guess you know the length of the poem would also come into play yeah. here. And if they're asked to read it a second time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if it's if it's a very long poem, and then you know, like you're kind of just sitting there, like, oh, like what do I do with my hands? Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's a hope for me too. Like in the moment, you're like, where is this going? Kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, but you know, I I don't know. I don't think anyone's ever written me a poem before. Like, have you ever had a poem written about you? Yeah, lovers. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Lovers, you know. Do you remember how any of those go? <laughs> uh, they're not Christmas related. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but in the end, especially, you know, a coworker where you are just expecting, I don't know, a Chick-fil-A gift card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to be, fair, true, true, true. to be fair, when I did have poems written about me, they were sent to me so I could read it in my own terms, at my own pace, you had yours read, read to you, to, yeah, which can be awkward. But, uh, all in all, it, it was fantastic. I, I said it was one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. Oh, yeah. It's that way, was awesome. Way, way, way up there. Yeah. You know, up there with getting a Michael Jordan doll when I was like four years old. Oh, you know? that's it's up cool. there with the Michael Jordan doll. Wow. That, that's, well, that's high praise. But, yeah. But that, but that was a hot, t that was like Turbo Man and uh, Jingle All the Way. Yeah. You know, that was a hot ticket item. Yeah. You know, that was a no brainer. Whereas the poem, you really had to put a lot of thought yeah. into. And effort, too. Okay. Um, so let's see. How, how do you guys feel about uh, political topics and conversation coming up at family gatherings? Oh, man. I mean, you, you know it's... Because I know you have a different <laughs> family dynamic, so... You, you know it's inevitable, though. Especially if you have, like, a larger... Ex if you spend the holidays with your extended family and they're, like, a little bit larger... Then like you know, like not everyone's going to agree about everything, especially with politics. It's it's so polarizing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So like personally, I would prefer to just have nobody bring it up. But you know, you always have like oh like you, your one uncle who's always talking about like oh like the conspiracies and everything. Like that it's like their whole personality. They're they're gonna bring it up. Yeah. I think it's more so about how 
you handle it. You know, like you can choose to engage with them and have that political discourse. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you don't want the rest of your family catching strays. Like, so for me, it's a no. Yeah. Like, I I mean, it's not like the end of the world if they bring it up. But I would prefer if we could all kind of just, you know, put that stuff to the side and just enjoy the family time. Yeah, I, I I get that. I'm kind of in the middle because... Um, it, I think it depends on what exactly is being said. Uh, I'm not a super political person, so if you start talking about the Congress and all that crap, yeah, right. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but like, when it comes to core values and those get brought up, I don't have a problem talking about that. I don't have a problem stepping on toes if I have to, you know. Um, a majority of my family knows where I stand on some issues, too. So, so, so I understand, and, and it's important to stick with your guns, at least morally speaking, but you will, if like, if you heard something like that, you would kind of get in that person's face and... No, never negative, and that, and that's, okay. that might be an ego You thing. would just offer the other side of the argument. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I always keep it, okay. keep it cool, calm, collected, because I don't ever want to perpetuate the idea, like, well, I'm not going to listen to you because you're blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't ever want to, like, perpetuate the idea that because I believe something or don't believe in something that, you know, I'm You can't associate aggressive. with that person or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. never anything like that. But, you know, things do get brought up, like, you know, major issues that get brought up, especially, like, ever since COVID, I feel like there's always something crazy going on that's worth a discussion. Yeah, the last couple of years, I feel like it's been almost impossible to ignore it because... So many people have been glued to the news. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's day. also changed everyone's lives, like, in different, varying degrees. Yeah, so, like, it's absolutely. hard to avoid the conversation. Definitely. It is hard to... I mean, if, if I ever heard anything, I would... I, You guys know me. I would try to make a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I would try to do, like, a Trump voice. It's like, oh, well, they're calling it the Kung Flu. I never, <laughs> never heard of it, you know? They say it's bad. I feel okay. I feel fine. <laughs> yeah. And like, I think that pisses some people off, but it does end it most like, no, but it's, it, it eases the tension a little yeah. bit, for yeah. sure. And there's definitely a difference in the way people bring it up, too. I feel like you can tell when someone's trying to push your buttons and trying to, because they know where you stand on an issue. So I have been in situations, and not necessarily during the holidays, but family gatherings where you know the other person is trying to push your buttons. Yeah. And mm. in that case, I'm... Nothing. Like you get they nothing al- from me. I'm not giving you an inch. Almost like they <laughs> Because I don't up. want to give them the satisfaction. You like know? they prepared for an argument. Yeah. Like they came in with their bullet points. Yeah. It's like... And in that There's case, pumpkin pie right over there. Yeah. It's like, can we just turn on a movie or Please. something? Like, play a board game? Christmas Uno. story's on. It's like 13th hour if you want to <laughs> check that out. Uh, yeah, but that's that's never fun. Um, okay. Let's see. Are you guys familiar with the movie Christmas with the Cranks? I am familiar, yes. Tell me about it. That sounds familiar. So it's another Tim Allen movie, which explains why you may have not seen it. Uh, but it's Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis, and essentially they are empty nesters. Uh, their daughter has gone and joined the Peace Corps, and it's like it's Christmas, just the two of us for the first time in ever. Let's blow off Christmas and like take a cruise or yeah. go to some tropical. Like they they go on vacation and they come back and like they're the only people tan in the whole town. And like <laughs> the, it, it, it's a funny movie. I feel like I've. Seen parts of it that sounds familiar. So my question is, like, we all have, like, our all our own traditions, and we like getting together with family, but is there a scenario in which you would rather just blow it off? Like, no gift-giving, no Christmas lights, no Christmas trees, no cookies or turkeys or anything like that. You're just kind of off the grid during the holidays. Is that something you would ever do? I think that there, it could be liberating. Like the only way I could see myself doing that is if like my family was out of town or you know, like like, like a scenario like the movie where like they, they just know that like they're not really gonna have like people around to do Christmas with. It'd almost be like liberating to just like have one, you know, one Christmas where you're kind of just like, you know, oh, like I'm just gonna do me this Christmas. Like I'm just going to hang out. And as I get older and older and I shop for more people for Christmas, I'm moving more and more away from consumerism. And I'm kind of like the idea of not having to do gifts. Not because I don't like to buy people things, but like it just, I feel like the meaning of Christmas, whatever that means to you, whether it be more religion or just more culture, you know, like, I don't know. I I move more and more away from like, I don't even want to do the gifts. I just want to go on a vacation, like go on a trip. So if you were doing this and you decided not to give gifts, 
Would you accept gifts people tried to give you? If someone already bought it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you wouldn't feel any guilt about accepting a gift and not giving that person no, something. No, I don't ask for gifts. So if someone goes out of their way to buy me yeah. something. Do you think they would be expecting something in return? I feel like if you give you, I feel like if someone's getting you a gift because they want something in return, then I, they shouldn't be giving me a gift. That is always such a strange feeling though. Like when like, you know, like you, you get somebody a gift and like they like don't really have anything for you. It's, it kind of makes you like wonder. It's like, well, why did I get them the gift? You know, it's like, I got them the gift because I care about them, not because I was expecting a reciprocated gift like in return. Yeah. But it's, it's always like, it's just kind of awkward. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's almost like there's expectations. Exactly. There it's it, like yeah. too, it's too reciprocal. It's like, okay, you, and then it, then you put price limits on it. Then it's like, okay, well, I'm going to spend $100 on you, so you need to spend $100 on me. And it's like, it should, that, none of that, whoops, none of that should matter. You know what I mean? It should be right. like... You know, I got you this because I thought of you and I thought, and that's when I give gifts people Christmas, birthday, or just in general, I love to shop. So I, like, if I see something out and I, it reminds me of somebody or like, oh, I remember someone said they needed this. I'm just going to get it and give it to that person and not expect anything in return. And, you know. And you, get, you get more joy shopping and putting thought into a nice gift for someone else than you would opening something up. Like, especially if it's on a list yes. that you put yeah. out. Yes, expect, and I, I hate making lists. I hate and making my family's lists. a big list family. Wait, so are, uh, Jacob, we didn't get your list. And it's like just it's give like, me something. Well, Aunt so, Lynetta, are y'all? I'm 30 now. <laughs> Do I have to come up with a list every year? Are y'all people that like you would rather somebody get you something that like for, like is from the heart from them or like I, I guess like you're saying like you would rather somebody just get you something that's like genuinely a gift they they thought of for or you or just cash. Like, I would be okay with that. <laughs> I'm actually, you know what? I'm in the middle because I do like thoughtful gifts. But like I said earlier, I don't like gifts that are bought because someone feels like they have to buy you something. And that's where the expectation comes into play. I remember I had a birthday party a few years ago and I told everybody, I'm like, don't give me anything. Like, I have, I have too much stuff that I have to get rid of as is. I was moving in a few months. I'm like, I don't want anything. I said, if you feel like you have to get me something, because I, I can feel that sense of obligation too. If I go to someone's house, I feel like I need to bring something. I'm like, give me flowers because they will die. Like, literally. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I'm a big flowers guy. I don't know why. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's the gesture. It shows I thought about you, but I'm not burdening you with this item that's going to sit in your house forever. You can throw them away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I won't feel bad about it. Well, I mean, then you can also re-gift things. You know what I mean? That's why yeah. I, I kind of like when people get me a gift that like I don't necessarily like enjoy because mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh, this is money I'm going to save on getting somebody else a gift. You that's know? true. Like somebody else might like, appreciate this more than me. Yeah. I, I've done that before. But, but then the re-gift really means you put zero thought into the person <laughs> you're re-gifting well, to. Well, yeah. I mean, when you put it that way, I, I personally like to see it as like, wow, you know who would really like this? This person I haven't gotten a gift for yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> this person who I would not spend a dime of my own money on. <laughs> well, this was so much fun talking about so much Christmas fun. and the holidays. I'm so super excited. Um for the holidays. We had a super fun holiday Christmas party last Friday. And, you know, this was a fun little takeover. You know, I love Miss Carter, love being behind the scenes, but it's kind of nice to be a star of the show. So, <laughs> how do you guys feel? Uh, I can't help but feel that uh, once you're uh, done being the star of the show, that's where your input will kind of stop. It'll be up to me and Christian to <laughs> do the rest. Yeah. <laughs> but I am glad for this participation. It was, it was really I did my nice. part. You yes, know. You're done. No, yeah. Wash hands your off. hands of it. <laughs> Whatever I feel happens. Like you're the editor. We, we had some great conversation, though. You know, like I, I thought we talked about a lot of fun holiday related things and like. Especially since, you know, our, the content's kind of uh, winded down a little bit since it's like the holidays. Like this is just like a fun little thing that we could just put out there for people to watch. Yeah. And I think it's nice, too, because um, Christmas is one of those holidays that like because we live in America, there's so many different cultures. Everybody celebrates it so differently. So I think it's cool that, you know, we the just the three of us alone celebrate it so differently. Cool. too. Yeah. So that was cool to see that, you know. And even if there's that member of your family that you don't necessarily get along with or butt heads with, I mean, it is Christmas and we all have that person and we may be that person, <laughs> but uh, it's just that time of year to kind of put your differences aside and kind of appreciate the people that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely glad I got to do that with my work family. So uh, thank you guys so much for 
doing this with me. Of course. Yes. You guys are an awesome team. I love working with you guys. And I'm excited for the new year, too. See what the new year is going to bring. Can't wait. Victory show. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of candid conversations in the new year. Oh, yeah. Chopping it up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned for those candid conversations. Uh, Abby, how can people find the show if they've never uh, watched or listened before? Yeah, if you've never watched us uh, before, we are called The Love and Victory Show with Val. You can find us on YouTube. We have a radio show as well that goes live on Saturdays on Raise the Praise 100. Um, we're raise the praise 100.com and all of our social medias are LV with Val. Please follow us and have an awesome, blessed holiday. That's right. Happy holidays. Happy Merry holidays, Christmas. everybody. Thank Peace you. Peace and blessings. Bye. Bye-bye.